OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, we are from Corona Norco Adult School, and our presentation is an orientation that sticks. We're going to be going over what our goals, whoops, sorry, new to this, our goals for uh, redoing our orientation. We're going to do an overview of the process that we are now currently using and how it's working. We'll go through some of the pros and cons of how it's working now, how it was working in the past. And stop, just stop. <laughs> It's because I'm using my right hand, right? Right click. <laughs> if I use my left hand, it'll stop. And then last, we'll talk about the tools we've used. So to get us started, I'm Christina Hyatt. And instead of telling you all the normal boring stuff, I will tell you that I was at a Barry Manilow concert last weekend. Um, apparently, I'm a fan, although I didn't know the word. <laughs> I am. And not only that, I made my 14-year-old daughter be a fanalo. Her first concert, she said, maybe I shouldn't share this at school. I'm like, yeah, maybe not. So that's me. Uh, my name's Colin. I'm talking for the... Uh, my name's Colin Cordell. My interesting fact, I have two. Um, I went to an Adele concert in December. I took my wife and my sister and our best friend. And it was amazing and practically life-changing. It was like marriage, kid, Adele concert in Las Vegas. And I'm not ashamed. And uh, Sarah and I bonded over what she's about to share. So in my spare time, I love watching any show or movie with subtitles, but specifically K-dramas are my absolute favorite so, when I need to unwind. Yeah, so we bonded over that a ton while we do a bunch of all of our tech work. So <laughs> very thankful. So um, I'm going to share about our overall goals for orientation and kind of why we thought through this process and what happened. So a couple of things I think I want to just get a feel for the room. So who here has continuous enrollment at their adult school? Okay, so who has like one enrollment a semester or quarter where like you get your students and you keep them for however long? Oh, okay, well then that's good because we're continuing enrollment. I feel like whenever I'm in a room with adult educators, it's like, oh, well, we get one batch and they're there for 16 weeks. And I'm like, wow, that must be so nice for your life. But anyway, so one of our big thoughts was how do we keep orienting students to our school throughout the whole year. Because we know we get this big batch in August, July. What do we do with our students in December and March? We want them to know what's going on. They want, we want them to know our school. But how do we do that? And so uh, we decided, as we started looking at this orientation process, that we wanted some big goals. And of course, our biggest and like the biggest, highest goal is learner persistence. And we want to orient our students and register them for a class and want them to be so well situated that they can't do anything but persist and succeed with the goals that they entered our school with. And so we spent a lot of time talking about, okay, where does persistence drop off? How can we help orient students and help them to understand where our school is so that if they have a work schedule change or a family life change or they move or they're in a state of transition with their job and they need to switch or they need to pivot or they need to take time off, how do we help them know from the start how to get those resources or how to switch versus teachers emailing, hey, you've been gone for a month. They're like, oh, well, I moved. And you're like, well, if you, you know, it'd been great to know that because I can give you a virtual class or I can move you to nights or I can move you to days or I can move you closer to your home or I can, we have classes that offer childcare and like wanting to, them to really know all of our resources. We also wanted there to be unification within each program. So our school is separated with high school program, English as a second language, and career technical education. So we wanted each program to have its own specific orientation and registration process that met the needs of that particular program. But we also wanted them to have a orientation registration that, that really spoke to the whole school. So it wasn't as if these like silos of storage, well, okay, you know, high school program does this, but then ESL has to do this, and there's no overlap. Because then if a student is attending, you know, a CTE class and an ESL class, they're like, well, it's like a different school. So we really wanted there to be unification within each own program, but we also wanted there to be a unification of the school that really brought out the diversity, benefits, and great things that our school is doing that other students could know about and then tell their friends, family members, coworkers, people in the community. 
Another big goal was we wanted it to be simplified and streamlined. We really wanted them to not be bogged down with too much stuff. So we want them to know about the school, but we don't want them to be overwhelmed by everything and you know, drown within all the information. Um, in the past, we're gonna talk about this later in cons, we had like some just dead time and orientations at time where students would be sitting for an hour or two and we really wanted to minimize that as much as possible. Um, and then our other two ones here at the bottom, we wanted a vision cast for our students. We wanted them to know that even if they were starting at a literacy, beginning low level, that we had plans for them. <laughs> we wanted them to be encouraged to think about what does career education look like? What does you know, um, getting your GED look like? How does that happen? Where do, we get, where do we go to college from here? Like you can start at our most basic entry level class, but we want them to know that we're wanting them to succeed however they want. And so we, and we want those avenues to be open and prepared for them at the most basic level or most entry level class or program we have at our school. And then I think one of our, our biggest goals, we bookend these. So if we have learner persistence at the top, our other bookend is fidelity. We wanted to know as teachers that 100% of the students that entered in my classroom after a registration batch all had the same information as each batch of students before. That was a huge thing we wanted. We wanted to make sure that each student who came in our classroom was receiving as much as possible, because there's always you know, that kind of two or three percent. We wanted them to, we wanted to know as teachers that they were receiving the same information over and over again. Because a lot of it's really important, like who to contact, programs we use in class, how to contact the office, um, languages we offer, things like that, even in terms of technology, getting devices if they need. There's a whole list of things that can take hours if you're a teacher of having to like reorient every single student, which can instead be covered in an orientation. And so that was, those are our major, thanks. Those are our major goals for uh, the orientation. Uh, this is a website that we're using. We're going to share the link with you halfway through the presentation, okay? So I want you all to listen. We wanted you to listen first, no distractions. And then when you can be distracted, we'll frown with it. So. Um, Sarah is now going to take over and she's going to give an overview from kind of interest to the end. Okay. So I'm going to take you on our journey of orientation and registration. And I feel like it's really important because it may be a student's first time coming to our school. And as I was listening in my previous session, um, a student may be brand new in this country, and this might be very overwhelming and intimidating for them, or maybe it's been many years since they've been in school, and we want them to be welcomed by very friendly faces, and um, we, so to let you know, we do um, our orientation and registration process by um, each department, so like each program. So we have an ESL registration, we have a high school um, program, which includes high school equivalency and high school diploma, and we have the CTD. So, um, obviously, um, it starts somewhere, and that is with a student's interest. So, a student has an interest to come to our school, where do they begin? And we direct them to our website, our school website. And on that website, they are going to fill out a Microsoft form. And on that Microsoft form, um, they fill out some very basic information, their name, their email address, and they get to select which program they're interested in. And once they um, submit that form, they get confirmation. We all like confirmations, right? I, I forget things all the time, and it's nice to be able to go to my email and go, okay, I signed up for this date and this time, and they know when their registration is. And not only do, does, um, do they receive um, this confirmation email, but we're all busy adults. We need reminders, right? So they get a reminder email. And all of this, as you can see, is done through um, Power Automate. This is not my part of the, the process, but it magically works. I love it. And so they, like I said, they receive the emails. and. It's great because through Power Automate, um, these Excel files are created. So we have um, an idea or a pulse of who's coming. And when I say that, we know that not every student is going to show up to registration, right? Um, so we can at least prepare for that day 
and um, and have the materials and the staff, the appropriate staff necessary for that date. Okay, so once they are registered um, for their orientation and registration, um, this is oh really quick. This is what this reminder email looks like. So look, we have um, a day of the week, the date, the time. And if you notice here at the bottom, it's from a certain program. And this is kind of important because how many times do we have students at our schools that are en enrolled in more than one program? And they might enroll at the same time, but they're gonna be on different dates and times. So maybe if you have a student that comes to your school, they might be a little confused and get the days wrong and, and we can direct them to the right place. Um, and so occasionally a student will like show me their phone and, and I say, okay, you're, you're where you're supposed to be and it's just reassuring for them. And it helps us know, you know where to put them and direct them. Okay, so now the students, after they've registered online, they come to our campus and they are there for registration orientation. The very first thing they do when they come in our classrooms is they fill out a counseling card. And this, the whole purpose of this is for them to get their student ID so we can put that in Tops Enterprise. So they can just move on with the process further on out. And um, I teach in the high school um, program and so we have everything set up at computer. And, and each program varies a little bit because they have you know, different needs. But when we do our registration, we have these folders, we have that counseling card like right there in front of them with a pin next to them so they can start filling it out. And then um, once they fill out that counseling card, um, I or another teacher have another helper in there like a paraeducator or an aide and they kind of help take those to the front office just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. So it is, I don't want to say chaotic, but there's you know stuff going on and you're walking around the room and you're helping people fill out information. Um, sometimes they forget like their date of birth, very important. Um, <laughs> and so yes, so that is our next step and after they fill out that counseling card, we have more forms for them to fill out, right? We have to register them. They also have to fill out a barriers form. And like I said, we're walking around this classroom, making sure you know we're helping answer any questions that people may have, um, helping them fill it out. And one of the things that I love about this, um, this process that we have Everyone works at their own pace. Obviously, we want to try to get them in there as you know quickly and get them out. We're all busy, but sometimes people need maybe take longer filling out a form, and um, we they are, they're able to watch this video and take their time, go back, go forward, re re rewatch the video. So, just so you know, at each of these computers that we have in this class we have headphones. So when it's time for them to now do the orientation video at their own pace, they put them on, they push play, and um, they get to start it. Here is a video that we're gonna show you of our principal, Dr. Rubelitis. So this is just one part of the orientation video, that or slides that students interact with. And when you watch this, you'll know why we put it in, because you all probably struggle with the same thing. Hello, and welcome to Corona North Football School. My name is Dr. Cordier Blyden, and I am here to serve you, the students, staff, and teachers of the Corona North Football School community. I welcome you to our school and congratulate you on taking the first step in as you complete the application forms today and the registration, I wanted to share with you three things. Number one, we are funded by the state and federal government. As such, we require students to take a test and to be able to show progress. 
today as you take your test. This is your first test of the year. So do what you know. Don't worry about what you don't know because what you do will help us to understand what your needs are and the teachers can instruct you as needed. And that will help us to show progress at the end of the year. Secondly, we will require you to do a test in the middle of the semester and at the end of the year. These test records are what you share with the state and the federal government to show progress. Secondly, you will notice that we ask you for your social security number on our registration form. This is because the federal and the state government can follow your progress and continue to support you and support schools like us to continue to provide free and low-cost classes. Finally, I'd like to welcome you and tell you that we are here to help you meet your goals. Thank you for investing in your future and ha ha having us help you meet your goals. I'll be coming by the classroom as we start the school. Hope to see you and wish you happy learning at Corona Northwest. So, it is cute. She's so cute. She is adorable. We love her. So it's a nice explanation of why do I have to take this test again? Because some of these students are returning, right? And they're like, are I taking this process test again? Yeah. But it's very important because that's how we fund this their, their education, right? Um, so uh, they watch that video. Towards the end of this orientation process, there are some forms they can fill out. As you can see, we love forms at our school. It has just automated things and made things a little bit smoother. Um, some of those are, one of them is a student technology intake survey. Um, one that a lot of us, you know, is very important is a request for a device. So we have Chromebooks that we got money from. CARES Act. CARES Act, okay, and so we have times each month where we distribute these um, devices. And we do have te uh, students that are in hybrid classes and they are in need of these. So they can fill that out. And um, just like earlier with the orientation registration, they get a follow-up email, okay? So they can, re they can um, remember when to go and pick, and pick it up. And also, they can sign up to get a copy of the orientation in case they wanted to go back and refer to something and also a digital version of this orientation booklet that we have. Okay, so once they've done all the paperwork, let's see, step four, um, the students are now going to be receiving those um, papers back to the office. So, during this time of them filling out the paperwork and watching the orientation video, the office should have assigned them a student ID number. And those come back to that room and they can now um, start taking their CASAS test. And so we just get them set up on that. And we try to prepare as much as we can where we already have a tab open on their computer. So there's no clicking back and forth and it's open to where they take a test and then they enter in that student ID number. <coughs> okay, and then this final step, they're done taking their test. Now it's time to enroll them in a class. So each student gets to counsel with the teacher that's running that orientation registration session. And we talk to them, we ask, okay, what, Depending on the program, obviously for my program, it's do you want to do high school diploma? Are you interested in equivalency? Students still may have questions that you can count, counsel them on. Um, and we fill out their paperwork. We write down the teacher's name, the day of the classes and the time. So the, the students leave that room knowing who their teacher is when they, and when they have classes. Um, then we send them to the main office where they get a picture student ID. 
And like I said, they get that orientation handbook. And so students are ready to start school. Yes. This is all within the three hour. Yes. All it is all, yes, yes. So just really quick, I just wanted to remember, sometimes students miss their appointments, right? So um, we can accommodate them. And you know, we obviously want to accommodate students. And because teachers run these sessions, um, it's easy for us to be able to take the student like as a walk-in and be able to register, register them. Um, because it doesn't really take much of our time away from our class. We are having them watch this video. They're filling out a form. And um, just at the end, we just kind of fill in that paperwork, make sure everything's filled in, and we write down the class they need to take. So that's how we handled students that aren't able to come for those type days. And it, it's not the norm. So it's not like we have like a lot of students coming in. Yeah, but to, just to add to that, because the orientation is self-paced, um, and it's all digitized, you're not getting the one-off student coming in and missing that entire piece, the orientation that you would normally present to an entire group of students and then the one walks in late or one comes on the wrong day. Because it's all online, everybody gets the orientation. And that was one of our goals, that it could stand alone, that if we all got sick, you know, <laughs> like it could still run. It wasn't person dependent, but it was program. And it's awesome, too, because I meet students that are going to be my students. I also say, oh, I know who your teacher is. You're going to love that teacher. This is what their classroom is like. And so you're, like, you know, encouraging them, making them excited about the, their program and their class. And then sometimes um, they'll maybe confide and say, oh, well, I want to do, um, I'm interested in this. And a lot of times I just have them fill out that form right there because it doesn't take that long to fill out that, that interest form online. So do you essentially have an online virtual orientation for students that are 100% online? We do. <coughs> we do. Because okay. we do remote testing. Okay. It's not like yeah. we, it's not the norm now, but that's what we did during, during the pandemic. The pandemic. Absolutely. Okay. It's it's a little different. Obviously, um, Dr. Rublitis, our principal, is part of those. But Collins and ESL, so they run very similar. You, we, I think you should look at the when we're about to share the website, and you can look at our pros and cons. High school program is where we want the other programs to be at. Is why we're talking about this. ESL <laughs> has been a little bit clunkier. You're trying to get everyone to watch. We are. Yeah. This will be happening in fall. Yes. Like, no okay. question, no equations. And as far as the, sorry, I'm totally interrupting. I apologize. As far as the slides go, the first set of like 10 to 12 slides are the same for every program. Going over the mission statement, going over, um, you know, all the different programs, the different types of classes, meet the office staff. Those are all the same, but then we <laughs> add in program specific things. For example, in the high school diploma, versus high school equivalency. I spend quite a bit of time talking about the difference between those two programs and the difference between high set and GED and the pros and cons of each one because that is the question that tons of students come and ask us, especially at the end when we're now asking them to make an informed decision if we haven't given them any of that information. And to add a side note, if any student waivers at all, they go to the counselor Absolutely. who is our professional Yes, we do. <laughs> we have an orientation booklet, handbook as well. And the handbook matches the theme, the feel, the look. A lot of the information is the same as what's in the slides as well. And then more. I took mine out of my bag so that I wouldn't be too overloaded. Orientation, all of these pictures are linked. Once you get to the website, you can click and like watch the orientation. So. I'll leave this up for a little bit, but if you go to the home screen and you click the first picture that's like, click here for this, if you click that, it should 
take you to our school website, which you can watch through the orientation. So everything that is, you see is all within public reach, which was so much easier trying to deal with student confidentiality. <laughs> so everything you see here, anyone can get by Googling really well. So um, that's what that's what that's really important. So, uh, any other questions before we start? Like, so we're looking at everyone on the same page, everyone in the same orientation. Do teach? Does that mean any teacher can set teachers run? Any teacher could then do the orientation. Yeah. Oh, teacher film the orientation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at classified staff and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like our, so we have a classes uh, para educator basically a support staff that can run the classes and stuff, but teachers are supposed to be able to run it. So I mean, as always, you have more tech savvy staff than and more time available staff, and those are typically the ones who end up running registration, but. The idea is that every teacher can run it at any time. I do everything. <laughs> <laughs> one secretary and one para. That's it. So, but we need to do it. Well, and some of the materials we've created have made it such that one person could do it all. Um, you'll see some of our handouts that we give to the in person students. You're going to do these five steps there's QR codes, there's checklists, so they know. Yes. So right now we're set up as uh, ESL does the first Friday and Monday. So I missed the registration yesterday, but I'm doing it again on Monday. So we do a Friday morning, Monday evening for ESL. And then right now, high school diploma is doing once a month. At the beginning of the semesters, we do more, but we have found that, um, you know, midway through the year, if you do them too frequently, you're getting one or two versus getting 15 or 16. We so, batch it, but we're looking at yeah. using this and streamlining it a little bit more. So we do some type of continuous enrollment. Well, we obviously do that already, but like on a walk more walk-in basis as needed. Because you know, when you're looking at all these programs, all these students, all these schedules, we really want to be able to meet those needs, especially because we offer classes every morning, some afternoon, some mid afternoons, and evening. And if we only offer one time, then we're missing those students who are going to the class that is nothing. Now we have a Wednesday, Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. So we have to offer some type of registration during Wednesday and Friday from 4 to 7. And having three staff and running a whole thing isn't very plausible. So being able to have the student come into the office, sit down at the computer, go through it all. And then we're not burdening the support staff that has plenty of work to do on their hands with extra walk-in. We have partner locations. Yes, for ESL only. Yes. yes, most of our HSP high school program classes and CTE classes happen at our main site. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes, mm -hmm. but we offer orientation and registration at another site, and then teachers at the partner locations run their own, which is why we're having issues with fidelity and ESL because if a student brings a friend to the elementary school that hosts our ESL class. <laughs> you, know, you're, you know, so that's why we're really working on this in ESL. Why it's clunky is because we really need those teachers to be able to run it. But it's not fair to them to say, okay, like let me teach you for three hours how to, about our school while I have this whole class waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're, <laughs> this is another reason for why we need to do this is because we need those teachers to be able to orient the student and then to also be able to teach their classes and to not extra burden the support staff. Um, yes. Like numbers, numbers demographics. Yeah. Like how many students do you serve a year? Two to three thousand, I believe. Exactly. Our vice principal sitting in the back. <laughs> 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 Two to three thousand. Yeah, we're a really good mix. We're a really good mix of demographics too. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and uh, we have a probably fifty percent Spanish speaking, but then past that, we really get the large chunks of Arabic, Farsi, Chinese, mm -hmm. Vietnamese. We have serious chunks of that. And so that's one of our goals for ESL. But I'm going to talk about that later. Please. Yeah. Take over. These are all great questions. Thank you. Any others on this before we move on? You don't assign an ID number until the form. Like they do the right. form. Yes. And so if you have a high school diploma that works for them, you go in and you get an ID number and you get that ID number and you can put the form on file. Yes. Do you track how many don't show up as far as the high school numbers? Like if you have a data. So it's been about 50%. But one of the cons of the form we use is students can't go in and um, 
cancel an appointment. So they will go on and fill it out with a new appointment. So, you know, sometimes it's that, that they've filled out the form several times, but they're coming to this one. Um, and sometimes they'll miss and call us and say, I missed, can I come? And then there's the others who just, it's not the right time or something changed. Yeah, and we looked at using Calendly um, to do it because that does give the opportunity. But um, we have to remember when we're building the system that it's not just for the people that are building it. <laughs> and that it affects a lot of people. And we went to the office staff and they said, no, that doesn't work for us. So we had to come back and stick with the form, which is working great and allows so many powerful tools with the Power Automate. So we stuck with Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. We haven't experienced that, um, luckily. It, the counseling card does require, like, address, phone number, birth date, and then the registration form requires all that again. And we haven't had any frustration with that. They just know. It's just part of the process. It's easier when they're new. <laughs> Later when they come and they've already filled out a form and we make them fill out another form, they're like, but I already filled out a form. I don't Honestly, know, I think please. we hear it the most at device <laughs> distribution. We yeah. require students to fill out an interest form for device distribution. We verify their class, verify that they need it, and then give the systems time to create their username and password. And then when they come again, they fill out another form saying that they're taking ownership of it, that they're at fault. I mean, it is what it is. It's just a legal thing. But so often they say, I already filled out a form. I was like, yeah, you got to fill out it again. <laughs> and they're like, it says I need a, like, a picture ID. It's like, your school one's fine. A picture of it is fine. Like, I'm not the government. I just need to know that you're who you say you are. <laughs> like, so I, that's the only time I've ever heard students like, I already filled out a form. Yeah, when, they're, when they've been with us long enough to complain. Yeah. <laughs> and they know we'll listen. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but we did go through specific insights by program on some of the pros and cons of what was happening in the past and what's happening now. I will say um, one of the pros of what's happening now is, like we said, um, every student is much more likely to get an orientation now than in the past. And um, that information is unified, right? Everybody's getting the same information. Um, some of the cons are um, we're not um, in any language other than English right now. So that's also future casting. Something we're hoping to do over the summer is translate these materials into other languages. So every student gets an orientation. They get an orientation booklet. We hope to have those both in other languages. Am I okay? <laughs> okay. All right. So um, did I list enough cons? Oh, and then the other con is Nearpod, which I'm going to talk to you about with tools we use. Okay. So here's what we used for putting together our orientation. Um, we used Canva. Is there anybody in here who doesn't, never heard that word before? That's what I thought, right? <laughs> Everybody knows Canva. Canva is amazing. Why did we choose Canva? Because we could make the slide presentation, the booklets, the logos, everything to match, right? Because we're using the same images from Canva. We also like that Canva is, um, once you use those images, they're yours. You're not breaking any copyright laws. You're not running into this image doesn't belong to us. You can purchase images off of Canva. They do belong to you. You can use the free ones. They belong to you. Can we upload these to Canva? You can upload. Yep, absolutely. And so there is a free version. There is a paid version. But there's also an educator version, which is very much like the paid version. So if you want more information on the free versus paid, the link is there. Um, but it really comes down to images, from what I can tell. Like, when you have the free version, there's a lot more images that they say you can have it, but you have to pay a couple dollars for it. 
But at the end of the day, you pay those couple dollars, that image now belongs to your school. Nearpod. Has anybody used Nearpod before? Two, three, okay. So Nearpod is an interactive slide deck. So we took all of our slides from Canva and put them into Nearpod. Nearpod also has interactive things such as polling and games and whatever. It's great for teaching. And our K-12 district bought it. We got it. So we do have the paid version. And the reason we picked it was because you can require students to watch that video of our principal. We felt it was important enough that they were going to have to take two and a half minutes and watch it. And Nearpod does not let them skip. <laughs> um, also, we liked it because of the interactiveness. That, you know, like there's a poll in the middle of mine that's like, hey, which, you know, we just finished talking about all the programs and we're like, okay, which program did you want to choose, right? The poll matters to no one. Nobody looks at the answers, right? But it's just to get them to interact, to get them to be part of the process of choosing their education. Um, so we can also, we, we linked out, like I said, to the three um, forms at, towards the end, right? We have them right there do the intake survey form. So our principal came and said, our numbers are terrible. I said, no problem. I'm going to put it in our presentation. <laughs> and now every new student fills it out. So it's done. It's taken care of. Um, students are like, where do I get a computer? No problem. They request it on the day they show up. They're more likely to get it faster. Um, let's talk about the cons of Nearpod, especially the, the free versus paid. OK, um, what we didn't know, we have the paid full-on version. 250 users. So the first time this happened, <laughs> Sarah called me in a panic. She's like, it's not working. It says we've exceeded our limit. I'm like, what are you talking about? So we learned the hard way that there is a limit. So every couple months, I just create a new link. Also, anytime you want to edit it, it's a new link. So my dear vice principal, who's in charge of our website, has been very patient with me when I'm like, it's a little emergency. Can you put this on the website? But that link is on the website. Everybody knows where it is. Everybody can find it. Okay. Um, any questions about those before I turn the time over to Colin? One of the nice things about Nearpod is it's like you can go in and change one thing. Or you, it's not like re, it's not like a video where you're like, okay, I've got to go in and fix this one link, and now I've got to recast the whole video, and I've got to re put it down and download it, upload it, and do all this whole you know, thing, but it's like fixing one thing, one new leak, link, call it a day. So. Yeah. And that's the cool thing, too, is like over the year we've come up with lots of ideas how to improve it, and some of them we've done as we've gone along when it was time to make a new link, and some of them we have um, made a list for a summer project. As you know, summer projects are the best. Um, okay, so no questions about Canva or Nearpod? So just so you get an idea before you actually look, our Nearpod, it's slides from Canva. It's these interactive videos. Like I said, there's a couple polls in there. Um, and then once they get to the last slide, it says, hey, you finished your orientation. Raise your hand and someone will come by to help you start your test. And it takes about 15 minutes or so which is just enough time for the office to come back with their student ID cards. So nobody's sitting around waiting on the office, which has been fabulous. How many students do you have? We can accommodate up to about 40 in the one room. But if we were to have more students come, we can overflow as well. We have devices and staff that knows how to run it. So we can pull them in an instant. But usually what we do is we'll limit it to about 40 because we try and just use the one room. And then in those times where we get a lot of students at the beginning of each semester, we'll run more sessions, more than one a week. In ESL, we have about 70 to 100, give or take. And so that's why, again, another reason why ESL has just been a little tr struggling along there. We need to look at languages. We need to look at digital literacy. With high school programs, we're looking at adults who are most likely fluent in English. or. You know, there's a lot more competency with ESL. We're looking at a lot more difficulties. So, um, 
I'm going to talk about a little bit about Power Automate. This is a tech uh, conference, so we really wanted to focus on the tech. So um, some of these links are from an old presentation. So if they aren't good, just let us know. But these should be good. So who's heard of Microsoft Power Automate? OK, more than I expected. Great. OK, so Microsoft Power Automate is a tool that Microsoft created to act as a go-between so it could kind of copy what Google does. So Google, if you create a Google form, you can go in and it'll have an Excel sheet that you can have after you create the form, and it auto-updates. So every new student who fills out a Google form, can you get their information <laughs> automatically. That's not the case with Microsoft Forms. You can open the Excel sheet, but it doesn't auto-update. It's just that one instance of all the answers that you've gotten so far, which is great for backup copies, but not great when you're looking at, like, I need to update the list of what's going on. Power Automate was Microsoft's answer for that. Now, Power Automate is like an ocean of ability and possibility, and we use, like, a cup full of it at our school because it can do some insane things. I have a friend in the medical field. He works at City of Hope, and he uses Power Automate. I swear, I think he uses it for surgery. I don't know what he does with it, but it is insane what he does. Uh, we don't do that. We use it for automation and for really talking between systems. So we use it in our office for transfer forms. We use it for TOPS program updates for our office. There's always a backup. Uh, there's always a backup to it, which is great. So all the information is hidden behind our district firewall and Microsoft, so we know all the information is protected. We use it for a tech request form that students or staff need tech help. They put in, they fill it all out. I'm actually going to be presenting at this at the TESOL uh, forum in two weeks. So if you want more information, I'll be presenting only on Microsoft Power Automate um, on the 17th. So there's a ton, ton that it does there. And so in this program, one second, in this program, what we do here is we use it to, when the student fills out an interest form, we auto-populate an email that then does the confirmation email and sends progressive reminders. And the staff isn't having to go in there and click, OK, send. OK, send. Oh, this email doesn't work. Oh, I, this didn't work. They don't have to worry about it. It does it all on its own, and it does it at a regular interval. Sorry, sir, what was your question? Uh, who actually wrote the I did the start. Oops, sorry. I did the start of it, and then some people ran away from me. <laughs> and so our CTE coordinator, who's not here, she and I had like we found it together the same weekend. We were on spring break, and I texted her. I was like, "Did you see what this was?" And she's like, "Yeah." And we deep dove in different directions because she's CT and I'm ESL. We kind of met in the middle. So we have a couple people with different hands in it. Um, but in this case, this is pretty easy, I would say. <laughs> okay, maybe not, <laughs> but um, I typically run them, and then I realized because our, our username shut off every year, so then I shared every single flow, which is what the dynamic within Microsoft Power Automate is called, with several of my colleagues, so that if any of our accounts went down, we had saved the flow, because those things are really, really annoying to have to recreate at least. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to get it to send an email from not my email. Because if it's my account, so it sends from my email, and I have ESL teachers emailing me, well, I don't know about the student. And I'm like, well, I didn't make any decision. <laughs> it's an automated, or I had one teacher, he was so sweet. He would always email me, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I finally was like, it's an, it's an automated email. I'm, I'm not sending them, <laughs> but thank you for like responding all the time. So yeah, and then Microsoft Forms and Google Forms are pretty simple, right? They're just ways that we can track. We have, um, I kind of explained here why we use different ones. Google Form is so much easier, and it looks better, and it's cleaner. Microsoft Form just has a lot more power behind it, which adds to clunkiness. I think in the next year, we might move all the way over to Microsoft Forms, but we don't mind it being in different places, so yeah? Is this part of the Microsoft suite? It is. Microsoft Power Automate is free. It's just not publicized, because it's boring and clunky because it's like AI and like building stuff in the back. So yeah, it's free for any basic, I double checked, it's free for any basic Microsoft uh, subscription. And our CTE coordinator who ran away with it, uh, Google, or no, YouTube, she told me. Yeah. YouTube she learned how to do everything stuff. she wanted to do on YouTube. Yeah. Go ahead, Marcy. Like maybe it's cloudy day, can you make the command 
really great. And you have to be able, it's like it's broken for instance when like someone's a password expires. And then the, it's like a house of cards kind of crumbles, which is not hard to fix, but if 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 Colin's on vacation, then we need so just make sure there's cost savings. So then they got loans. Yeah. And has and access. We, it's just a matter of like this is what has to happen. It doesn't have to be super techy, but that information is kind of available. Yeah. I definitely I will just encourage to have a Tech team, a little group of people that work together and make things work. Uh, I think it's because you're going to have, um, we're not getting a response email, we're not getting a confirmation. We can go back and check it. I done it. I laugh because it is simple, but it is a different language and a different way of doing things. And so it's good to have those. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So. Yeah, and there is a ton on Google, and or there's a ton on YouTube, and there are some like clear, there's, yeah. The problem is, is that Microsoft never built it for education. So there's like one video on education out there. You've really got to think. It speak, Power Automate speaks in a language of sellers, buyers, customer, consumer. And so if you re, like I just rethought of it. If every student is a potential customer, and I am the employer, and I'm the seller, then everything really makes sense. But it took me a while to be like, oh, okay, so if I, if in Power Automate language, every student is a potential customer and I am the seller, then I can like equal out some things and figure out the rest. So it was a, this was born of COVID necessity. I was, I'll never, I was in an RV <laughs> on my way up to vacation trying to figure out how on earth is this going to work because we need a way to transfer students out of my class. <laughs> and I can't have six transfer forms sitting in my box at work that I haven't seen in three months. Like we've got something. Anyways, side point. Um, the last thing is having a school website. So important to have a non-block, non-password, and not just open to the public place for students to go. If you don't have one, I suggest a Google site. Um, this is what we have here. You can add your own domain name if you need to. Our district provides its own website, and so, you can click on it. Maybe. Just kidding, I'll fix that. <laughs> you, can, you can click on it and it'll go to the website. And then, um, actually I have it right here. Let me... So you can click on it and you know, you'll go and you can see everything. And then we have under resources, orientation resources. And then they can go here and look at it. This is the page they see during the orientation. And it's just so nice to have a public face for them to see. And it's great for them to be able to interact with our school website, has our address, all of our socials. They can sign up for their interest form is here, right? And so they can put in all their information. Um, they can request the device on the, on the website. They can ask for tech help. Um, it's just a really nice place to have all of our stuff. So if we lose it, like when I need to send it to a student, I go to the website, I click and copy the text, and then I send it to them. So. Is that interest form one of the Microsoft forms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a Microsoft form right here. I, okay. Oh, yeah, it is a Microsoft yeah. form. You're right. Yeah. Yep. So that's what it looks like. Then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then we tell them they can translate it. This is something that's been translated up here. So they've got, we have Spanish and Chinese at the moment. Okay. So. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then that goes to an Excel sheet? Yes, this goes into an Excel sheet. Yeah. And not just one Excel sheet, but many Excel sheets. Yeah. Because um, there's an Excel sheet for each program. So as the program coordinator, I have just the high school program Excel sheet. But I also have access to the Excel sheet that has everybody on it, which would be more for office use. I don't hardly ever look at that. And that's something you can do that. in Power Automate. You can tell it to only auto-populate this Excel sheet with this information that, you know, if a student chooses high school program, that Excel sheet will only have the high school program information. And then we have a backup one of, you know, everyone for the office, which then helps with, you're not worried about things getting deleted, which is nice. <laughs> like you can't accidentally delete something. You can't accidentally ruin something. That's, that is the benefit of Power Automate is you can't break it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's a, it's Microsoft. <laughs> like you can bash it, but you can't break it. And so it might not work for you, but you can't break it, which is a nice backup, which I told all the staff a lot of times, like you can't do anything to break this. So just do what you need to do. And if it doesn't work, like let me know or let us know as a tech team.
And one of the cool things about having our sign-up form on our website, plus all of our orientations on the website, is our website's now getting a lot more clicks. What's great about more clicks on your website? SEO optimization. Yep. More people are seeing it. And when I just did registration last week, I started asking students, hey, how did you hear about us? We're hearing more and more students say, I found it on your website, right? We want our website to be the first thing they see when they search. And if we're getting enough clicks, Google thinks we're more important than we are. Oh, no, we are as important as we are, I mean. <laughs> um, I did want to go back because somebody asked earlier. Um, and we have these amazing infographics. So oh, yeah. this is a, a printable sheet that goes to the satellite locations for the ESL program. So the teacher has this, and it tells the student exactly, whoops, sorry. It, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly the steps that they're going to go through to enroll. This is their orientation. So they're at a satellite location. Maybe the teacher doesn't have computers out or whatever. It doesn't matter. They can do it on their phone. This is our halfway step. I just want to press. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's our halfway step. We yeah, they're got getting... halfway to this, and then we had some, op some feedback and some pushback. And so we said, OK, this is a great half step. Let's keep talking. And honestly, for so many people who are, you know, especially admin, something we talked about a ton during COVID and during our talks on COVID and technology is really getting 100% buy-in. If you want to do something and half your staff is saying, I'm not going to do that, they're not going to do it. <laughs> and it's adult ed. So apparently, they live in a world they can say no. I didn't know that existed, but OK. And so you know, they say no. And so you say, OK, like, let's wait. You know, let's wait it out. Let's keep talking. Let's iron some stuff out. And so we feel like we've gotten way more buy-in so that you can get to the point where high school program, everyone is doing it, and everyone understands it. And that's why we've taken longer with ESL. We've got more people, more personalities. And so we've waited to make sure that we've got real buy-in and we have an ESL registration committee that has now come together of ESL teachers saying, like, this isn't working and why. And we get high school programs to come and say, well, it's not working because you didn't say yes six months ago. <laughs> and so <laughs> now we're going to make sure it works. <laughs> Any so. other questions? Yeah. yeah. CTE, their orientation is a lot more complicated than the rest of them. Um, Aren't they fully digital, practically? So she does it over Zoom, right? If you want to, the CTE in the interest form, one of the questions she asks is, hey, are you computer literate? And if they say yes, she says, would you like to do this registration process on your own? Yes. Then um, she provides the orientation in an IORAD, Tutorial. Have you guys heard of IORAD? Do we need to talk about that? Okay. Let's see if we can find it. It's on my Google. Okay. You want to bring yours up? No, it's outdated. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this is what it looks like near Pod. We always have students join as guests. We don't ever make them. Sure. Summer class is going to be the name of that one. Let's see if we can find her IORAD. It might be at the very end. And we're going to have to watch that video again, probably. <laughs> Anyway, this is kind of, these are all the slides everybody has the same. And then when you get to the end of hers, then she goes into the program specific. So this now um, went to a clickable link. We're going to continue as Colin, I guess. Sorry, Colin, I don't know what that is. And I think that these are all clickable now. So if you're interested in child development, <coughs> then she clicks it and it takes you to a new Canva slides deck. This is a Canva slide deck. The student doesn't even realize they left Nearpod, but they left Nearpod. Okay, and it goes through the details of that class. And then, I think, how do you get back? Where, where are you trying to go back to? I don't know. 
know. <laughs> well, you need to I want to get back to where I was before. I don't know. Anyway. It was a, big, it was a different window. It was a different window? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah you're this, right. This it one? opened a new window. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew that. Anyway, yeah. um, I'm not seeing where the near, the Nearpod, I think the IORAD comes from the Power Automate email. Oh, there is one in the computer skills. I feel like Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know where I think it is? I think it's in the, um, when you fill out the registration form, if you say you don't need help, then it does an IORAD. You want to just go to IORAD? Yeah. We, can, we have two minutes, and I'll give you a two-minute IORAD. So what's cool about IORAD? Have a question. What is it? Yeah, it is a freemium <laughs> um, tutorial where you, as the person preparing it, you go through and click on the links and type in the things that you would have students type and click don't on. Don't look, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, we do have an IO rad, yeah, don't we? I think there's one in Canvas. Is it? Or no, maybe Class Necessities. Okay. It's adding students to Canvas. No, that's a video, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, I got rid of all my IO rads. This is an IO rad, isn't it? Nope. None of those are. <laughs> yeah, I think it's in there. Maybe in attendance. <laughs> so sorry. We really have. I'm sorry for that. Somewhere is. Okay, so Iorad, you go through and you oh, click on things and you type things in and then it creates a tutorial that with a voice that indicates what you should do. Next, click on blah 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 blah. Next, da 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 da. And it's you know it's got the pink like light up here where you've clicked stuff. So it's pretty amazing. It's freemium so you only get two with all the bells and whistles and then you have to pay but they recently came up with an educator price that's pretty reasonable. And um, we used it a lot in the beginning for um, creating tutorials, and it worked for the CTE teacher for these students that needed to create an ASAP, because she does it all through ASAP. They don't do forms. So they go into ASAP, they create their account, they do the um, barriers form, they have to take a pre-assessment and register for the class and not pay. And that's a lot of steps <laughs> that IORAD takes care of. So. And we use CASAS e-testing because it provides instantaneous results. We love it. Yep. Yeah. We can always go back and get scores, and we can place the students right away. In the future. Yep. Yes, so in. Yeah. The funny thing is we were there. We were there, then like COVID threw us off, but we're going back that way. Yep. Any okay. other questions? Can I curtsy? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, I'll add our information. Oh, thank you. <laughs>